What's up everyone? How's it going? Welcome back to the Rideshare Hub. My name is Dylan. I'm Liz, hi. For today's video we're going over, I think we have 17 ways on how to get more tips as an Uber and a Lyft driver. And so I brought along a passenger who we're going to go over the ways and see whether or not she would tip if the driver did these things. So let's do it. All right. So why don't you introduce yourself really quickly? Maybe, maybe throw a fun fact in there. All right. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm a very frequent Uber Lyft passenger. Um, fun fact, I'm not afraid to ride shotgun in a Lyft or Uber. So I'll be up there and up front. You're one of those. One Not of those afraid. girls. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So let's get right into it. The first way to make your passengers tip you is having a clean car. Yes. Inside and outside. I th I'd say like inside is more important, but what do you think? Definitely inside because that's where, you know, your passenger is going to be spending time. It's not enjoyable for the passenger to have a smelly car things all over like if yeah. you want a better tip definitely keep it clean it's easy have you have you taken a ride in a dirty car before oh gosh yes <laughs> i have one time it literally smelled like a gym locker room i had to put my face outside the window the whole whole time was not enjoyable good thing you weren't there but just keep your car clean <laughs> a gym locker room that's very disgusting it was foul. It yeah was foul. I mean, at least it's not like dirty feet. Or was that included too? That's kind of in the gym locker room. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, so basically just keep your car clean. Um, a really good way to do this is after every ride, do check in the back seat, make sure your passengers don't leave anything. And then after every couple rides, you know, do like a full sweep, you know, get out any crumbs if you can. And then after every day, I would say like use a little mini vacuum and vacuum out the things in the back seat. Um, and then, you know, wash your car every couple of days or however long you, um, you know, you drive, De depending on how much you drive, clean your car, just, you know, relatively clean. Tip number two, smooth driving. Smooth driving is really important. And the reason why your passengers take an Uber as opposed to like the bus or the Metro or whatever is because they want to sit back, relax and have a nice smooth ride and safety is first. So. You know, when you, I know you probably can relate to this, but when you get into a car, you're trusting them with your life. Oh, wholeheartedly. Like, yeah. I could not agree more. You want to make sure that you have a safe experience. Like, you don't know what type of passenger is going to come in. It might be like a pregnant woman, an elderly man. Like, you have yeah, to make true. sure that you're being safe for the precious cargo, which is your passengers. You don't want anything to happen to one of you guys or someone else on the road. A mm -hmm. couple practical tips on this when you are approaching red lights or stop signs, um, accelerate s smoothly. So that means slow down smoothly. And then when you take off, you know, also ease onto the, the gas. Um, and that's just also with like yellow lights, like don't speed through, be conservative on yellow lights. Don't, you don't need to <laughs> rush through. Your passengers don't really care if they're a minute or two later, no. if they have a safer experience in exchange for that. Well, I mean, just like yeah. safety is key. Your passenger, like, I don't want to feel like I'm in a Fast and Furious movie. I just want to get there safely, get <laughs> yeah. there smoothly. You know, I'm not there like holding on to the sides. Actually, like, yeah, the biggest difference between a taxi and a chauffeur or like taxi and an Uber is like, if you think of a taxi, like you kind of expect them to speed through and like, you know, make all these shortcuts. But if we're an Uber, a Lyft, or like a chauffeur, you want to, you want to have that chauffeur experience. Oh, definitely. Where you're like chilling back, hanging out and you, you know, you, your driver's got you. Number three, and this is the one you brought up, but it's stay calm and don't have road rage. Oh my gosh. I was just with a driver and I mean, yes, there was someone on the road who opened their door in the middle of oncoming traffic and the driver almost hit the door, but the driver was almost provoking the guy, like trying to get in a fight. And I was just back there like, oh my gosh, I don't want any part of this. Like, please just go. Like yeah. as a rider, you want a safe experience. You don't want to get into a hostile, crazy environment. Like things might happen you're not expecting on the yep. road, but keep your cool. Yeah. I mean, when you're driving a car, normally there's going to be sometimes a pass or another driver's going to cut you off. It's bound to happen. Um, or somebody gets in your way. I mean, people make mistakes, but the good way to react to that is not honk your horn and well, maybe you can honk your horn if it's safe, but you know, don't yell at them and make your passengers feel like uneasy. So, um, yeah, keep it cool. Take a deep breath. Relax. Yes. <laughs> All right. Tip number four. Um, this one is really important. A lot of drivers, I mean, I've taken a lot of trips as a passenger and I've seen a lot of drivers mess this up for some reason, even though it seems really easy. 
but it's the music. I, I don't know why, but a lot of drivers like blast music and they don't really take into consideration that your passengers might not like to listen to jazz at 6 a.m. in the morning when it's blasting in their face or like rap music. And I don't know, I've had that experience. What about you? I mean, I feel like definitely there's, it's nice to have some kind of music is just soft background noise. You yeah. gotta have there so in case you wanna have a conversation with your passenger or just to listen to something. But I mean, for a lot of the cars, the speakers are in the back, and so the passenger's just hearing it right behind their ears, and if it's blasting, like, that's annoying. That could give me a headache, yeah. I don't want to be there. Just soft music. What Almost about, think, like, yeah. nice elevator, like, something soft. <laughs> elevator music, or, like, soft acoustic music or something. Something calm and light. Um, keep, it, keep it low, though, and whatever you think is low, turn it down a couple more notches. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so tip number five to get more tips is ask your passenger's preference for the air conditioning and as well as the music. And so the reason I say this is because actually a lot of passengers don't really have a preference for their AC or the music, but just by asking them, it creates this experience that it shows the passengers that you really do care for them. And so when your passengers feel cared for, they're gonna tip you more. So. Yeah, I don't know. What about you? I mean, it's kind of like what you said with the more chauffeur experience versus a taxi. Like, when you create that personal yeah. touch as a driver, you do show you care. You show you want the passenger to be there. And when the passenger feels like they're being more, like, waited on and served, you're going to get a tip and certainly a better tip. Exactly. It's like, it's almost like customer experience or being like... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, being like a server in a restaurant. Like, it, it's almost like an exchange. And like I said, most passengers don't really care. They'll... Usually 90% of the time they'll be like, yeah, I don't care. But like, it's the thought that counts, right? Oh, it's definitely the thought. And also yeah. it's just the fact that you're willing to take the extra mile for the passenger. Your passenger certainly isn't expecting it. And when it happens, it's like, whoa, they care. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Tip number six to getting more tips is greet your passengers. When your passengers get in, say hello, ask them how their day is. Look them in the eye, like look back really quick. It takes two seconds and that really shows them it, it it's first impression, right? It puts it puts the trip off to a good start. You're being a human. You just have to say hi. You know, I'm not gonna sit next to you and just not say hi at all, you know? Yeah, and even proximity wise, like you have somebody sitting right next In to you. In your car. <laughs> it's almost like, okay, maybe I'm just that person on an airplane, but like when I sit down with someone and I'm gonna sit next to somebody for like six hours, I at least say hi. You say hi. <laughs> like it's just Yeah, I'm not gonna courtesy. talk to them the whole time, but like at least be like, hey, how's it going? Like like, I acknowledge you're here, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like, uh. So, um, yeah, and I've taken trips a lot as a passenger, and almost, like, more, I would say more than half of my drivers don't even say hi to me when I get in. I would definitely say more times than not. It's yeah. almost just, like, all eyes on the road or the phone. It's not, you don't even look back at the passenger, yeah. which is silly. Yeah, so this brings me to my next one, number seven, to get more tips, is smile. This is the same thing going along with greeting. Um... There's something that happens when you smile, when you see another person smile at you. It releases some serotonin levels. I don't know the whole science Positive about endorphins. It. Endorphins. Thank you, <laughs> scientist here. Um, <laughs> Liz the scientist slash passenger. Uh, yeah, just smile at them. It it shows, I don't know, it, it spreads positivity and your pastor's going to have a better experience if you smile at them. I mean, imagine if you go, hey, Liz, all right, let's get to your destination. Let's or, do it. Or think of it this way. All right, let's go. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, which one do you prefer? The first one. It's not hostile. <laughs> Watch. It's really smile. Hi. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Hi. Don't... You don't even have to wave. You just can say, hey, oh, no, how's you your need, day? You need to wave as well. <laughs> <laughs> no creepy smiles either. <laughs> no, yeah. You don't want to feel like it's like, oh my God, is it, do I need to like make sure the doors are all Yeah, locked? don't make eye contact too long. Don't be like, hey. <laughs> then your passengers would just probably leave. But anyways, a little off, little off topic here. Sorry about that, that was all me. Tip number eight, how to get more tips, is ask your passengers questions, okay? And th this is actually, I'm, I'll talk a little bit about this. So sometimes you're gonna get passengers who wanna talk, and then a lot of the times you're gonna get passengers who don't wanna talk. But a really good way to gauge this, like we said, is just greet your passenger at the beginning, just say something like, Hey, Liz, how are you? And then based on her response or your pastor's response, you can kind of gauge whether or not they want to talk. If she says, you know, I'm fine. 
then she probably doesn't want to talk. Or if she says, you know, I'm, you know, I'm pretty good, blah, 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 what about you? Then she, you kind of can gauge that she wants to talk. And then also after that, a follow-up question. This is what I do. Then I say, how's your day been? It's almost like an open-ended question. And if you're, after that, you can gauge if your pastor responds, oh, it's been fine. Or if they go, oh, you know, I had the longest day, blah, blah, blah. The, the this, da, 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 da. And then if they start talking, then you can kind of, then you then as a driver you can ask follow-up questions and always make the conversation about your passenger unless your passenger asks don't talk too much about yourself and always follow up with the question about them i just think it's important as a driver just read the room you know like you said if dylan was my driver and he was saying hey how's your day and i was like oh it's good i'm headed to the grocery store what do you have planned for the day yeah then obviously engage but like let's say maybe like Something personally happened to me on a bit. I'm in a bad mood. I'm just like, oh, it's fine. Thanks. Then probably I wouldn't keep the conversation going. Just yeah. read the vibes. Just be like, okay, you know, <laughs> let me know if you need anything or whatever. Um, yeah, but also like you never know what your passenger is going through. That's true. In that day, you know, something tragic could have happened. They might have had the best day of their life. They could have won the lotto. Maybe they want to tell you their entire life story or Maybe they're just an introvert and they have their headphones in and they just want to chill. So yeah, read the situation. Tip number nine. This is really controversial. Well, it's not that controversial. <laughs> but a lot of drivers like will say, oh, no way. I'm never going to do this. But you can try it out if you want. It's have a tip jar in your car. So I know some drivers who do this and they swear by it. And, you know, a lot of people don't actually leave anything in, but it tells the passenger, it communicates to the passenger that you do accept tips. And you know, in the past, Uber and Lyft have said, oh, you know, you don't need to tip, this is not a taxi. But like passengers or drivers do accept tips. So having a tip jar can help. Um, I don't know, have you ever? I have actually never seen a tip jar yeah. in a car, but I do feel like for those people, especially I'd say like more working adults, they're probably gonna have cash in their pocket and it's easier to give like, yeah two dollars a dollar then versus like select the tip on their phone because honestly when i get out of an uber sometimes i'm just like not, not games just like all business you know i'm not yeah. looking at my phone right after so i actually do think having a tip jar is a smart idea and like maybe put like a dollar or two of your own to see that yep. people are tipping so that'll encourage like your riders to want to tip you yeah i actually used to play um music outside like at a pier for for money like busking and i would always put some money in there before and you know get the momentum going yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> all right so tip number 10 is have some sort of water some sort of snacks yes. in your car um i know a lot of drivers like oh i don't want to deal with that you know passengers leave trash whatever put a little make maybe have a little trash bag in your in your back seat like a, a little bag or something or um have some waters in your car what do you think about that i love it when a driver will have like the mini water bottles or something just because yeah. when you're doing your day-to-day -day activities you might forget like oh i need a water and i just think it really adds a nice like classy like you're saying that chauffeur experience like you get yeah. in there the driver has it it's a luxury you know like i would personally say i think the water is a little more important than the snacks but yeah i think if you really want to ensure a good tip have both yeah i mean yeah probably mints is like the farthest i would go with snacks I agree. but Try out, I mean, whatever you think. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then the water is like, if you think about it, you can get, you can go to Safeway or whatever, get a 36 pack of waters for like three or four bucks. So it's really like maybe 25 cents per water bottle. It's really not much, maybe less. I don't know, I'm not very good at math here. I think you're obviously. gonna make more in tips though. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. get a big pack of water and you spend like 10 cents per bottle. Yeah. If the person gives you a dollar, it's worth your while, you know? And try, yeah, or maybe like five bucks. I Hopefully. Mean, some people, some people like have corporate credit cards. They'll just like throw in like 10 bucks um, if they have a good experience. Not everyone's going to tip you for the waters, but some people will. And then um, also try out, experiment with this, come up with your own strategy. The way I do it and the way I've seen other drivers be really successful with it is that they won't even have their waters out. They'll keep them up front and they'll ask every passenger, hey, do you want a water bottle? And then um, they'll just, the passenger will be like, oh, well, um, yeah, sure. And then if you hand them a water bottle, it's like almost creating this transaction 
So you just say like, oh, don't worry about it, you know, this one's on me. <laughs> they might go up and follow up and tip you, but you know, create your own strategy with that one. I like that actually, it gives more of a personal touch. It's connecting the driver to the passenger. Yeah, like, I don't know, maybe you have a passenger who just got out of the gym or just got out of a restaurant and be like, oh, hey, do you want a water bottle or whatever. Like, Long day at class. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, tip number 11 is, so when you're half, when you have passengers in your car, Keep your windows rolled up. Have you? Do you have any preference on that? Definitely, I think when it's hotter outside, have the windows up to keep the cool air in, or vice versa. If it's cold, you want the heat to stay in. Yeah. I've noticed like sometimes, like as a passenger, if it's a really nice day out, like you might want to crack the window down and just enjoy the breeze. But I do think it's better to have the windows up and the passenger can take them down versus the other way around. When your passengers get into your car, they don't want wind like blowing in their face and. The reason I say this is because, like, again, the reason a lot of passengers take Uber and Lyft is because they don't want to walk. They don't want to take the bus. They want to, like, a nice, comfortable experience. And the last thing they want to do when they're sitting in the back seat is get wind blowing in their face. Or if you're a girl, you don't want your hair messed up, right? No, especially, like, let's say maybe I'm going to, like, a, like a fancy dinner and I spent time on my hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, the you one get time in, I do. Just, like, wind well, like, yeah, exactly. I don't want, like, crazy you're like, things. Ah. You're like a dog sticking his head out the window. It's nice if I need to cool down, but not nice if I'm trying to look professional and go somewhere. So yeah. definitely keep those windows up. And keep the AC on too. Like, yes. Um, but also, I mean, ask your preference, but it's usually good to keep it a little cool. Tip number 12 is help your passengers with their groceries or their luggage. Yes, 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 yes. I think that one is honestly one of the biggest, like, like ways to show that a driver cares. Yeah. Like, honestly, I'm the type of person that I'll, I will put my own bags in, but just having the driver ask and try to lend a hand yeah. is greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes if I'm like, like going to the grocery store, putting a bag in the car, like just having them help or ask is huge versus like, imagine them just like sitting, like acknowledging you have these things and not even offer. It's just kind of like, okay, I guess you don't care, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I took a trip once to the, I was going to the airport, I was like, we had like a really early flight, so it was like 5 when we got our Uber. 5, five in the morning? 5 a.m., yeah. Because we had to get there like 6 or something. And um, my sister and I like had a bunch of luggage, and like our driver didn't, it was like pitch black outside and our driver didn't get out or do anything. <laughs> I almost feel like, are you my Uber? And I'm yeah. like, get someone's car She was just accident. chilling in the car, and then like, we opened up, I think I had to like knock on the on the trunk to get the to get her to open it. Or no, I figured out how to open it, so I opened it. And then I opened up the trunk and there was like a bunch of stuff in the back. Oh, that's the worst. Please have your trunks cleaned out. Like it's fine yeah. if you have like a water jug or like something small in there, but assume your passengers are gonna have something to put in. It's better yeah. to assume and have your trunk clean versus don't assume and they have nowhere to put their bag. Yeah, or if you have something, like maybe take your own lunch or something. Just you can have it, but put it off to the side. Don't have it, you don't want your passengers to have to move at all. I agree. And so like, when my sister and I had to put our stuff in, we had to move all of her like clothes and like, mm. there was some uh, black and milds <laughs> in the back. I had to like, you know, move them all. It was just like, it's just not a, I, I don't think she's getting her tip if that's happening. I was just gonna say, moral <laughs> of the story, I did not tip her. <laughs> uh, versus like somebody gets out of the car, Hey, you know, Dylan, how are you? Like, going to the airport? I'm like, yep. Like, all right, let me help you with your stuff. And I'll be like, oh, no, I got it. And you'd be like, but still, like, it's it's a nice gesture. It's just the offering that's nice. Yeah. Tip number 13. Um, you might, you probably haven't noticed this one, but this is like an old school limo trick. People who, like, are, like, nice chauffeurs. Like, they, so they pull the passenger seat all the way up. And this is in order to uh, maximize leg space in the back seat for your passengers. And then if somebody like you wants to sit in the front seat, no, I'm a front seat rider. Then they'll Pretty be good. like, "Oh, hey, yeah, thanks so much. Let me let me pull the seat back really quick." So, um, and they're like, "Oh, you know, wow, they actually pulled the seat back for me." I really like that, and I haven't noticed that. But yeah. I, someone like I'm a smaller person, so if I'm sitting in front and someone with like bigger legs, obviously I'm trying to help them. If I'm like in like an Uber pool, but yeah. if the driver does that brownie points right away like that's definitely on your way to getting a bigger and better tip yeah i mean you'll you'll notice like really good drivers like they provide you know that really that five-star experience they'll pull they'll pull the seats up and um that's a trick i learned and it does help a lot 
Tip number 14. I think we did talk about this a little bit in terms of um, asking your passengers questions, but it's establish a personal connection with your passenger. This is by far the number one way to get uh, a better to get your passenger to tip you is if you can create a some sort of personal connection with them it's not going to happen to everyone but those passengers where you're like i don't know if you can relate to something if your pastor brings up that i don't know whatever they like baseball or something and you're like oh you know i played baseball since i was three years old blah 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 you know i met eddie i don't know i don't know any baseball <laughs> who's that one guy <laughs> Eddie, oh my god. Moral of story, create a connection because honestly- Derek Jeter, that's that's one baseball player I know. Oh my god, okay. But I had truly the best Uber ride of my life last Saturday coming back from the airport and it was at an Uber Express. So basically you pick up in a common location, you get dropped off in an area that's close to your address, not the exact address. Yeah. The guy was super cool. Like we, he was from the Bay Area, he was moving to France. I had visited there, we talked mm -hmm. about it. like. Honestly, the conversation never got dull. We were talking the entire ride. I was the last passenger to be dropped off and it was raining. It was so nice. He literally took me to my door and I even told him like, hey, honestly, thank you so much. This was the best ride. Like you're a great driver. Just wanted to let you know. Yeah. That's... Like I appreciated that. Yeah. So yeah, you just said like he told you about his life, right? Yeah. So how did he work that into the conversation? Like, did you ask him or did he just start talking about it? So I got in the front and um, I was just like, oh, hi, how are you doing? Actually, he said that first and I said, how are you doing? I'm yeah. I always start with, if I want to talk, how long have you been driving for? Because that mm. kind of like gauges a question they're interested in. I can hear the response. And yeah, he's yeah. like, oh, five years in the Bay. And I was like, oh my gosh, no way. Like, I've been going to school here. And then... I don't know, the vibe just felt right and kept it was the like conversation very natural, going. Yeah. yeah, it was super natural. Like that's the thing. I never felt like uncomfortable or awkward and like mm -hmm. you just have to I know as a driver it's hard to feel that connection, but like let, let's say I was shutting down, don't keep asking questions. It's all about like you said, reading the experience. Yeah, responding and reacting. Um yeah. That's awesome. I'm sure Liz left a really nice tip for that gentleman. I'm not going to throw out any numbers, but you know, I did. Upwards of $100, let's say. I don't have that much money, but if I did, I would. <laughs> <laughs> tip number 15, guys. We're almost done. We're almost to tip number 17. Ooh. Wow, it's going to be crazy once we finish. Now you can move on with your life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tip number 15. This is like with people, if you're driving at night, um, around, if you're driving in the city or around college, parties or whatever, college campuses, sorry, forgot what I was going to say, um, is let your passengers party. I know it's like, why would I let my passengers party in my car? But it's like, you know, if there are, if you can tell they're going out, you know, they're loud, tell them like, hey, let's play some music. Hype it up. Yeah, hype it up. Some drivers have like, um, you know, lights in their car. If you want to do that, like these, you know, this is all extra stuff. This, this is not... You know, the standard thing, you don't need to do any of this. But if you want, if you're going for those extra tips, create a party in your car. Why not? You know, have your passengers drink shots. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. But you know what you could do? Um, my friend Snapchat, her Uber driver had a karaoke machine in the back. Oh, yeah. I've and seen that. that looked so fun. I'm like, if I was going out for a fun night, like, heck yeah, I'd want yeah. to start with karaoke. Like, that, I guarantee my friend left a really good tip just because, like, you want to like, yeah, keep the party going, like yeah. have good vibes, keep it going. And sometimes like, I don't know about you, but sometimes like when you go out, the the ride is almost as fun or even more fun than where you're actually oh, going. Oh no, definitely. Yeah. I One of my friends, they had so much fun with the Uber, the Uber went and partied with them. <laughs> I'm not kidding, the Uber really? driver literally <laughs> stopped and shipped and hung out with them. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, um, hey, like, why not? <laughs> why not? Want to make some friends? Sure. Maybe we'll make 17 ways to make your passengers be friends with you and invite you out to the bars with you. Okay. I can think of 17. <laughs> <laughs> 17 is the magic number. All right, tip number 16. Okay, this one, you might look at me funny when I say this, but it's be good looking. I know, right? You're like, what is the Is that heck? actually the tip? You're like, what the heck, Dylan? It's actually, okay, it's not like be good looking, like attractive, but it's like, you know, dress up a little bit. Present be, yourself. Be like, you know, don't don't wear sweatpants. Like, be a little bit nice. Maybe do your hair if you're a girl. Put put on. I don't know. You don't have to put on makeup. What I'm saying is, take a shower. You know, put on some deodorant. Be clean. Yeah. Be like. 
I don't know, present yourself in a way and then, yeah, I know, yeah, it's not, it's not like be attractive. <laughs> well, what I'm taking from it is when you're at the office, you want to look nice for like clients that come in, exactly. and see your boss, the car is your office. So Say, you want to look yeah. presentable. Exactly. Say you're going to like a sales meeting, you know, you are you going door to door doing sales? You're not going to walk around in your sweatpants with, you know, a beard from chip crumbs, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, Hey, buy this, you know, this knife set from me. The guy's going to call the cops on you. If you dress up in like a nice little, you know, dress button down shirt, they're going to like, they're going to actually listen to you. Maybe. Well, maybe not, but, <laughs> um, yeah, put it, make an effort. You don't have to go crazy, but at least like, you know, business casual or like, just decently nice. You can wear jeans and a t-shirt, doesn't really matter. Sounds good to me. All right, tip number 17. The final one. So Liz actually brought this one up to me. You know, before we started filming, she was like, hey Dylan, there's something really important I need to tell you. She's like, I came up with tip number 17. No. The tip. Yeah, I only had 16 tips, but she was like, Dylan, we gotta do 17. Gotta make this. You know, this is really gonna make the 17's the magic number. Yeah, and I was like, all right, Liz, you know, what do you got? So, um, <laughs> tip number 17, do you remember what it is? I remember what it is. Yeah. So I'm someone where if I like smell a lot of things, like think of like an Abercrombie and Fitch store, right? Looks like they just literally lathered the whole place up with cologne or perfume. Yeah. That honestly gives me a headache going in. And I've had a couple Uber drivers where they've easily had like five air fresheners hanging and going in. I was like, oh my God, like, wow, it smells like pine in here. You know, like. Yeah. I would just assume, like, obviously have your car fresh, have your car clean, but don't have an overwhelming amount of scents. Like, I think whether that's, like, your cologne, your lotion, like, just kind of keep it neutral because, I mean, there are a lot of people who are, like, sensitive to smell and whatnot. Some and, people are allergic, too. No, yeah, definitely. Like, you want to make the, the experience as best as you can for your rider, and, like, it's not fun if you're sitting in, like, a 30-minute car ride and your head's about to explode. So just, yeah. like, be aware. Some people get headaches really easily. I get headaches. Thank you so much for sharing tip number 17. That really made the whole video. <laughs> I think if you could only listen to one tip, definitely 17. But take all these tips seriously because I guarantee you will get more tips in return. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's it guys. Those are 17 tips. Uh, try out some of these ones and you will see your tips fly through money, the roof. Money, money. Um, yeah, you all want that money. So um, any, anyways, anyways guys and girls, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Rideshare Hub. Leave a thumbs up if you liked Liz being on the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Give Dylan a thumbs up. And yeah, leave your comments below. What are the tips that you use to get more tips? Subscribe. And turn on post notifications if you want so you don't miss a video. We will see you all next time. Have a great day. Thanks for having me.